If you don't have a technical background but still want to learn AI, stick around because after going over more than 30 AI courses, I created this video to summarize everything I've learned so far in a very simple way. As a bonus, I'm going to share with you the top courses that will be the best for you if you want to go deeper in your AI learning journey. Trust me, you are going to love this. I'm going to be compressing a 38-hour course in just 9 minutes. Before we continue, we will start with the basic question. What exactly is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence or AI is the term used to describe the capability of a computer or robot controlled by a computer to carry out tasks a human can do. These tasks encompass various abilities like recognizing images, understanding speech, making decisions, and translating languages. The ultimate goal of AI is to develop systems that can mimic human-like intellectual processes, including reasoning, discovering meaning, generalizing information, and learning from previous experiences. In AI, there's what is called machine learning. Within machine learning, there is another called deep learning. Deep learning can further be divided into three, discriminative models, generative models, and large language models, also known as LLMs. So now to understand the overall definition of AI, let's look at what machine learning is. Machine learning is a branch of AI that focuses on giving computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Machine learning algorithms use large amounts of data to find patterns and make predictions. For example, machine learning can be used to recognize faces in photos, identify spoken words, and even predict which products customers are likely to buy. There exist two main categories of machine learning models, supervised and unsupervised learning models. The primary distinction between the two lies in the fact that supervised models rely on labeled data, whereas unsupervised models operate with unlabeled data. Supervised learning is about training a computer program to make predictions based on labeled data. The program is trained on data that already has known relationships between different variables. After training, the program can then use its knowledge to make predictions on new data. For example, Netflix uses machine learning to recommend movies and TV shows shows to its users. The company has collected a large amount of data on its users, including their viewing history, ratings, and demographic information. Netflix's machine learning model uses this data to predict what a user might like to watch next. In unsupervised learning models, we analyze the raw data to see if it naturally forms groups. For example, we can make a graph that shows how long employees have worked at a company compared to how much money they make. Now we can observe that some groups of employees have a relatively high income ratio to their work years ratio, while others have a different pattern. In this case, the data is unlabeled, meaning we don't have additional information about the employees such as gender, age, or company function. You can also predict which employees are most likely to leave the company. Then, you could use this information to create targeted retention programs for at-risk employees. For example, you might offer more training or mentorship opportunities to help them feel more satisfied with their jobs. If you want to learn further about this, I will recommend two courses for you. The first is Stanford's University Introduction to Artificial Intelligence. You can get this on Udacity, and it's for free. In this course, you will learn all about machine learning and some more fundamentals of AI and AI applications. The next one is Introduction to Artificial Intelligence with Python by Harvard University. This one is not for beginners, but is super useful. In this course, you will learn machine learning, some critical artificial intelligence principles, and how to design your own intelligence system. Now that we have learned about machine learning, let's talk about deep learning. Deep learning is the hottest topic in machine learning right now. Deep learning is a subfield of machine learning that uses neural networks to model complex relationships in data. Neural networks are computer programs that are inspired by the way the brain works. They have multiple layers of processing, which allows them to extract higher level features from data. Deep learning is well suited for solving problems like image recognition, natural language processing, and speech recognition. These tasks were very difficult for computers to do until the recent advances in deep learning. Now, they're some of the most exciting applications of artificial intelligence. All right, let's talk about some real world applications of deep learning. One good example is self-driving cars. Cars. The self-driving systems in these cars use deep learning to recognize objects like pedestrians, road signs, and other vehicles. They also use deep learning to make decisions about how to navigate the road. Another example is the technology behind Alexa and Siri. These voice assistants use deep learning to understand human speech and to respond with useful information. Deep learning has made these assistants much more accurate and natural sounding than they were just a few years ago. So the next time you ask Alexa for the weather forecast, you should thank deep learning. Deep learning can be divided into three. Discriminate Discriminative models, generative models, and LLMs. A discriminative model is a mathematical model that learns to discriminate between different categories of data. It uses a loss function to measure how well they're doing at classifying the data. The loss function is a mathematical function that calculates the difference between the model's prediction and the true label for each piece of data. A simple example of a discriminative model is a logistic regression model for classifying images as cats or dogs. Let's say the model is trained on a set of images, each labeled as cat or dog. The 
model learns to recognize features that are associated with each category, like whiskers and pointy ears for cats, and floppy ears and long noses for dogs. When the model is given a new, unlabeled image, it uses the features it has learned to predict whether the image is a cat or a dog. The loss function is used to measure how accurate the prediction is. To learn more about deep learning, I highly recommend the course Deep Learning Specialization by Deep Learning AI. In this course, you will learn everything you need to know about deep learning. You will also learn how to use Python and TensorFlow to work with advanced AI technology. Generative models are the opposite of discriminative models. Instead of learning to classify data, they learn to generate new data that is similar to the training data. For example, a generative model might learn to generate images that look like cats and dogs, based on the features it learned from the training data. Generative models utilize sampling to create fresh data. For instance, an image generative model could begin with an empty canvas and gradually add pixels using the learned features from the training data. It may randomly assign colors to each pixel, just like words to images. There are a few ways you can know a generative model. One is if the AI produces information that's too consistent or perfect. A real person's responses might have typos, inconsistencies, or contradictions, but a generative AI might produce perfectly grammatical, consistent responses. You can also look for signs that the AI is trying to imitate human human speech or writing patterns. Generative models are often trained on real data, so they may be able to imitate the patterns of human language, but they may not be able to capture the creativity of human communication. Examples of generative models are the text-to-image models. They can be used to create images that are unique and creative. These models can also be used to generate images that are specific to a certain style. Another type is the text-to-text -text model. These models are specifically designed to generate text. One example is ChatGPT4, which is a language model that can generate text in response to a variety of prompts. The next type is the text-to-video model. This model is a type of artificial intelligence that can generate videos from text prompts. They work by converting the text into a sequence of images and then using a machine learning algorithm to generate the video. These models can be used for a variety of purposes, including generating explainer videos, creating content for social media, and generating short films. And finally, text-to-3D model. Yes, some models can generate 3D models from text prompts. One example is any shape. Another example is mesh text, which is a model that can generate meshes and 3D point clouds from text prompts. To learn how to maximize these models, I recommend two of my favorite courses. The first is Introduction to Generative AI Learning Path by Google. It has a series of courses, which is divided into five activities. You will learn generative AI concepts, from the fundamentals of large language models to responsible AI principles. And the next is Career Essentials in Generative AI by LinkedIn and Microsoft. This course will teach you the skills needed to apply generative AI in your career. Large language models are a type of AI model that has been trained on a large amount of text data. These models can understand and generate human language, and they're getting more and more advanced all the time. For example, have you wondered how your sentence gets completed after typing a few words? It's the LLM that does the prediction based on data it has collected over time. I hope you like this video. If you'd like to see more content like this, please let me know in the comments. Also, don't don't forget to check out my other video where I share the best free AI courses.